Today on Dylan Talks Tone, we're going to talk about preamps and power amps. All right, so we are doing a series on putting together a solid signal chain for your guitar rig, starting with your guitar, going through a pedal board, understanding what each of those pedals are doing, and then going out to your guitar amp. The thing is, is that we got to kind of establish a baseline for our tone first before we start adding all those other pieces in there. So let's talk about our guitar amp itself. Just, you know, the normal one that we play through all the time. Every guitar amp, uh, most of them anyway, have a preamp and a power amp because they're taking a very small voltage and then stepping it up, sending it to the power amp and then stepping up, up again. There's a couple of different ways that we can send signal through the preamp and the power amp and it changes our tone and how it, how it works. So we have this small amp over here and we have this big amp over here, so we'll call this the preamp and the power amp. We could send that signal through there, and then it's in the power amp like this, and then we could turn the volume way up and have more room, right? It's called headroom. It turns it up louder, so preamp, power amp, boom, done, makes sense. The other thing we could do is we could do this. We could take our preamp, and we could smash that signal through there, turn that preamp up above its limits, and really get that thing really distorted and overdriven. We could send that distorted and overdriven sound to our power amp and make that louder. That's one kind of overdrive tone. Then the other kind would be this. We could take our clean preamp tone. We could send it through to our power amp. It would be clean like this and then we could overdrive that in the power amp. Now, obviously that's gonna be a lot louder, right? The thing is, it's gonna have a different dynamic range. They're two different, they're two different styles of amplifier and they do two different jobs. So they're gonna sound differently. Overdriving your preamp, overdriving your power amp are gonna do things differently. And here's why. It's not just the architecture of the amplifiers that matters. It's how the signal flows through there and what actually happens to the signal when it gets smashed up, okay? So if we take a normal signal, and we know that our guitar signal doesn't look like a normal sine wave or my messy version of it. We know that it, once we overdrive it, it starts to get kind of jagged and messed up, right? The thing is, is on those ends of those sine waves right there, where it gets messed up, the reason it's getting messed up is because it's compressing, it's clipping, and when we say clipping, we mean that parts of it are actually getting cut off. So we don't have the same tone that we started with before uh, we overdrove it, before we sent it into oblivion, okay? So it actually can change the sound of our guitar. This is why not every overdrive works with every guitar. This is why not every guitar likes to sound good with every amp. This is why certain amplifiers don't like certain pedals in front of them because the dynamic range of these various frequencies working together doesn't actually work together very well sometimes. And sometimes you hit it right on and it's amazing. It's really important to understand what's happening ahead of time before we get into pedal land with our signal. So do this, take your favorite guitar, take your favorite amp, okay? And just plug a cable in from one to the other. Don't do anything else. No other pedals, no nothing. And then let's do this, get a notepad. And if you have a master volume amp where you have a preamp knob and a power amp knob, well, we're just gonna call them preamp and power amp. They're not strictly that, but basically more or less for these purposes. The preamp is you're gonna have a pre and then you're gonna have a master, okay? So what we'd like you to do is take your master and turn it up uh, you know, as loud as reasonably possible, but still very, very clean. Don't, don't crank it, okay? Just uh, as loud as you can until it just starts to break up a little bit and then back it off so that it's properly clean. Then go over to your preamp and do that the same way there, okay? Because remember that you can kind of treat them a little bit separately as far as we're talking here. Take note of, take a note of where the volume is the volume knobs are on each of those settings, the preamp and the power amp, where you just are at the top before it's not clean anymore. Take note of that. And then start to play and turn your preamp up past that point. Take note of how the sound changes. 
Are the mids still strong? Are the lows starting to go away? Are the highs getting a little crunchy and crispy and messy? Take note of that and then turn that back down to where the clean, where it's very, fairly clean. And now go do the same thing over here on the power amp. Turn it up beyond its break point and listen to it. Find out what it does. Do the lows stay nice? Do the mid ranges get pokey? Do they get scooped? Does the highs kind of get messy? Take note of what's going on there, okay? You're gonna find that they're probably gonna do two things a little differently, which depending on which amp you drive, okay? Take note of all that, and if you have another favorite guitar, let's say you have a single coil guitar and a humbucker guitar, do the same thing with the humbucker guitar, and you're gonna find out that probably the settings on the amp are gonna be completely different uh, where that break point is, where that thing just starts to break up. Doing this uh, is gonna help you to understand what sorts of sounds you can make with the pedals that you choose. And as we start to get into choosing pedals for a pedal board, you're gonna see that everything interacts really, it really interacts a lot, okay? So not all guitars work with all pedals, not all amps work with all pedals. But understanding the break, understanding the baseline of the rig that you already have is really important. Take note of those frequencies, where they fall away, what you don't like about it after you start to drive that preamp, what you do like about it, what you don't and do like about when you start to drive that power amp. Figure out what you do and don't like because then when we start to select things to put in front of it, we can start to make up for weaknesses, we can boost things that we like, we can cut things that we don't like, but every pedal from every manufacturer does it a little differently. So instead of just buying a bunch of stuff, we're gonna figure out now that we have this baseline, what we like, what we don't like, and put ourselves together a really nice package. What do you like? How do you like to run your amp? Do you like to have the preamp really high, uh, like the Eddie Van Halen kind of tone, or do you like to have that power amp cranked all the way up because you don't even have a master volume amp like Jimi Hendrix, just a Marshall wide open? What do you like? How do you like to set your amp? When we're talking about no pedals, and let me know what you found with the settings. When you did this experiment, what did you find? When did your guitar start to break up your amp? Tell us what your guitar is, what your amp is, and, and what your settings are so we can all compare and talk about it because this is really fun. My name is Dylan. This is Dylan Talks Tone. This is a whole long series that I really want you to be a part of. Do me a favor and subscribe below and see what we can do uh, to build a really cool rig together. Have a great day.